Queen, Lord of Sunlight. Highest ranking deity of Analondo, possibly highest ranking deity period. How's he relevant, you ask? If we defeat the old Iron King and Nugan Plus, we get the old King Soul. While the description doesn't state anything of that sort, it is very likely that it is supposed to be the soul of Gwyn, or the Lord Soul rather. More on that later. Let's talk about what we can make of the soul first. We can make the Dragon Slayer Great Bow. A great bow set to be used to down ancient dragons flying high above the clouds. Extremely large for a mere bow, and more destructive than any ranged weapon imaginable. Shooting this bow requires the grounding of its stability anchor, which takes time and leaves the shooter vulnerable. Also requires great arrows. It's a huge ass bow returning from the first game. It probably caused a lot of players a lot of grief when they tried to run up the buttresses in Anna Londo, with two silver knights wielding this very weapon against you on a very narrow place, where it's easy to fall down. This is unupgraded and a new game, and does a lot of damage already. It does however require special types of arrows, which are rarer and more expensive than regular sized ones. But if you actually operate this weapon fully and buy a couple of great arrows, you're gonna do a lot of damage. It's gonna be very worth it for you if you ask me. Uh, there's another great bow in the game, the Alon Great Bow or Alon Knight Great Bow. Going by scaling and base damage, the Dragon Slayer Great Bow is definitely the better one though. We can also make a miracle called the Blinding Bolt. A miracle that creates a giant soul mass and transforms it into a lightning spouting orb of light. Crafted in ancient times by the God of Sun, but later forbidden by the same deity. Was it to protect the world from hatred or sorrow? It's a miracle that places a small orb that shoots lightning in random directions in front of you. Against single enemies it's not very useful at all. But if you can manage to place the orb inside a bigger enemy, it will probably kill him. It does require a whopping 65 faith though, so I'm not sure if it's gonna be worth it just to use that miracle. But used right, I suppose, it can actually do a lot of damage. Now more about the lore concerning all this. It's mostly going to concern Gwyn, but we're also gonna learn a little more about the Iron King. Both of the items are related to Gwyn in some fashion. Blinding Bolt's description directly references the God of Sun, which is most likely Gwyn. He is after all the Lord of Sunlight. The Dragon Slayer Great Bow was used by the Silver Knights, who stayed behind to defend Analondo. A city is said to be bathed in eternal sunlight, which is where Gwyn's keep was located. Of course, by the time we reach Analondo and Dark Souls, the sunlight is nothing but an illusion of Gwendolyn, one of Gwyn's children, who was the only remaining deity. Gwyn had left to rekindle the first flame, which was the source of his and the other deities' power, and possibly their life itself. And he didn't return. So the city was abandoned by most deities, and the few who remained to defend it only stayed until the illusion of sunlight is shattered should you decide to do so. Sometime prior to Gwyn leaving to rekindle the first flame, he also went to fight Chaos Demons, which were born of a failed attempt by the Witch of Isolith to create another first flame. Or perhaps those two things coincided, the timing of the game is not very clear in that regard. When we find Gwyn at the end of the game, in the kill of the first flame, he's too far gone. I'd say he's gone hollow, but going hollow is the lack of humanity or the dark essence of the abyss, which is what keeps humans human, I think, as long as they don't overdose. Gwyn, however, is a deity, and his sole motivation to rekindle the first flame is to prolong his Age of Fire. That is about to fade into an Age of Dark, or as Kath put it, which is a character from the first game, an Age of Man. His equivalent to going hollow comes from a lack of fire or a presence of dark. 
Whether those two are actually the same thing is up to interpretation, but frankly, it doesn't matter much. Perhaps you could also say that he was simply abandoned by his Lord Soul. Now, how does this whole Iron King deal make sense? The description of the Iron King Hammer mentions that the corpse of the old Iron King became the vessel that bred Icarus Earth. So the thing we fought was, despite being called the old Iron King in the game, actually called Icarus Earth. Whatever that means. Well, it could derive from Iker, which according to one definition, it is said to be a fluid flowing in the veins of gods in Greek myth. In Nukem Plus, the fact that we find a soul which appears to be Gwyn's sheds some light on this. Gwyn's soul is considered a lord soul. Despite there being four beings considered lords, only three of them actually possessed lord souls, but that's just an interesting aside and not relevant at this specific point in time. If the intro of the first game is to be believed, they found the souls of lords within the flame. Referring to the first flame, and they being otherwise insignificant nameless beings who found great power and were suddenly significant. Those lord souls are incredibly ancient. The only things older than them that we know of are dragons, which are technically extinct, and arch trees. Now this ancient soul, no longer with Gwyn, apparently still asserts some influence. Enough in fact to turn the corpse of the Iron King into what the game calls an old one. Probably precisely because it is this particular soul that grants it part of its power. Or all of it. It is unknown whether Gwyn or any lord with a lord's soul were born with a soul of their own or if they simply found uh, them within the first flame. Most signs point towards the latter, because none of the bosses in the first game that drop lord souls drop any other souls of their own. So there's a good chance that the lords were only being manipulated by the first flame itself. But there really isn't any way to tell and I believe that I may be overthinking this a little bit. Um, by the way, we can't really know if this soul we get on New Game Plus is just supposed to be a gameplay reward or actually significant in some way. I choose to believe that it's significant to the lore myself. It makes the lore of the game more interesting to me who has a decent knowledge of the first game's lore. In closing, I'd like to say that Dark Souls 2 makes it clear that no Age of Fire is going to last forever. But at the same time, this is also true for an Age of Dark. There's always going to be some ember underneath the ashes, or someone to smother the flame. So I hope you found this interesting. I could just text dump this, but I think it's a little more interesting to watch with some footage in the background. I'll probably be doing more videos like this when the lore of the first game becomes relevant like this again, once we reach the parts of course. Until then, take care.